everyone. Happy Saturday. Welcome to Alive and Streaming. It's a beautiful day here in the Bay Area. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you're at. I'm Ted. As you know, I'm your host. But today, I get to talk to a good friend of mine and a good friend of the bands and a good friend of all, everyone in the Bay Area. The drummer, a badass drummer who is in Exodus and he's been in loads of other bands we'll talk about. Let's please welcome John Tempesta. Let's see if he's in here. Where is he? John, are you there, bro? I'm here. Can you see me? I can't see you right now. What the fuck? Well, how do I do this? Let me see. Could I turn on your video? This is cool, dude. I like this. This is live on the spot. Wait a second. And you're not I'm there. Full screen. I'm right here. Oh, start video. Okay, here we go. Start video. Let's do this. Okay, so FaceTime, right? Start video. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go, baby. So choose background, face. Wait, what do we do here? Let video settings. This is awesome, dude. <laughs> you're not Look, on I do video this all right time, now. Man. I'm not Come leaving. On, video settings. The host says, okay, start my video. Here we go. There right. you go. All right. Johnny cool. Tempesta, dude. How are oh, you, man? What's going on, motherfuckers? Dude, it's been a while. I know, dude. Hold on one second. Let me let me uh, blow this up. Let me make sure. I didn't. I oh, see there you. Are. Okay, I cool. see you. You see there me. There you are. What's up, Ted? How are you, John? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing a lot better now. <laughs> dude, it's 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 been a while. What was when was the last time we saw each other? I think on the Testament uh, Anthrax, or we were at the airport flying home together, right? Dude, we're not together, but. That? That was like five years ago or something. Dude, that was like there was was it? three legs of that tour, 2011 and 2012. Wow. And yeah, I remember I was on a tour, then I had to leave for a few days to play a show with, in Abu Dhabi with the cult. And that's when Gene Hoagland came in to yeah. fill in for a bit. Then I flew from Abu Dhabi all the way to JFK. And and I, I didn't play that night. I, I remember that show was at the Paramount Theater in Long Island, if you remember. Wow, dude. Yeah. Jesus. But dude, thank you, man. It's been a while. Thanks for joining thank me, man. I really oh, appreciate man. it. Good to see you, man. I like that shirt. Where'd you get that shirt? Tascam, dude. dude. Tascam mic, Tascam headphones uh, all for my stream. Up, I got the hookup. Thank you very much, Will Branch at Tascam. Dude. Yeah. I've had Gary Holt on my stream. Mm -hmm. I've had Zetra on my stream. But, you know, we've talked about, like, you know, of course, the Bond by Blood era and all that stuff and some of the newer stuff. Impact is imminent and Force of Havoc kind of gets brushed under the yeah. fucking yeah. under the rug. And I want to talk about that because, you know, I've been listening to it this week and I've been digging it. But first and foremost, you got the gig through it with Exodus because Headbangers Ball Tour it was Anthrax, Exodus and Halloween. And you were mm -hmm. Charlie Benante's drum tech. That's right. Yeah. And did. Did you got? Did you know Exodus then, or was that the first time? I did because they opened up for Anthrax beforehand, so knowing those guys as well as Testament too, they were like the two opening bands and getting to know them and everything. And yeah, that's what happened. Tom couldn't do it anymore for you know personal reasons, and they Perry Strickland came in to do. Yeah, uh, that's right. He was on that tour, right? That's right. Yeah, and that's when I was asked to do the, to, you know, do their headlining tour. I'm like, dude. I was like, whoa, because I never played that type of music before. You know, I was always yeah. like a middle drummer, a hard rock drummer, but not yeah. trash like that. So I, I talked to Charlie about it. He goes, you should go for it, man. And so it was it was a real challenge for me and was listening a lot and and watching Perry on the tour and, and checking the guys out. And, and on days off, I would just listen and listen and really hone in. So that was it. And the tour was already booked. So I go home to L.A. after that tour and I didn't even get a chance to play on my drum kit. Um, I flew up to the Bay Area and that, that was it. That, I mean, the, our first show was at Lemoore's in Brooklyn, my hometown. I was like, this is insane. So I bet that sucks. So honestly, you know, we got along great and uh, the audition was a lot of fun. And yeah, that was yeah. it. I mean, like you just mentioned, you weren't really a thrash drummer, but I mean, being Charlie's tech for a certain amount of time, you must have picked up a lot of stuff. Yeah, I definitely learned a lot from Charlie, you know, and then watching him every day. And yeah, so I was like, wow. He has a unique style. I would, you know, we toured with him. I was like, Mm -hmm. Man, he has this uh, 
swing and groove that's like he does man he's effortless honestly i was like i when i worked him like the guy doesn't even sweat I'm like do you want to tell him's like now i'm like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> but i mean we go way back from high school like that's in uh i used to go to his uh his house after school and he played guitar and I, I get on this drum kit we just jam like iron maiden saxon songs and you know it was fun it was a lot of fun back then so you learn you, you learned some double bass from charlie huh Oh yeah, well, I, I mean, I need double. I play double bass, but not like that. I mean, yeah. I'll never forget the time because I remember he did the first Anthrax right, old Fistful of Metal, and I lent him my snare drum, you know, for the recording, and it was the second record actually spreading, and they did the SOD record right at the same time, and that he also had my snare drum, and I remember him bringing the snare drum back to my house and playing me the SOD song Milk, right. Oh, I'm yeah. like, what the hell is that? I mean, he just started laughing. And he goes, I don't know. He, I mean, it was just in some of the stuff he came up with. I, I was just mesmerized, man. Real creative. Cool. Now, uh, from being a drum tech, you, you, you know, join Exodus. How is that audition like? I mean, it was uh, Gary Zetro, Rick Hunold, and Rob McKillop. Rob McKillop, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what was it like? You went up. You went in there. Did you know the song? What was your tryout song? What I was just like? kept right. listening. Listen, I believe I was. I had a cassette player, and uh, they flew me up in in Oakland, some real dive motel right by the water there, by the bridge. I wish I remember the name. Gary would probably remember. And uh, yeah, because they had their uh, rehearsal studio in Emeryville, so that okay. was yeah. And uh, my drum kit was shipped up there, so set them up. And you know, I knew the guys, but I never really hung out with them. Like you know, as buds on tour and and so i just you know i was just just yeah, confident and just like you know i gotta do this man and and then it was so fucking loud in that warehouse man it was a coffee warehouse and it was so hard to hear my drums are big and stuff they're 26 inch bass drums and on top of it but we broke into it and it just you know it clicked man it felt good so what was um do you remember the song you first played with them <laughs> I would think some easy like brain dead, maybe not easy, but easy, you know, instead of breaking out with last act of defiance or something. So yeah. So Probably it felt, I mean, you guys go in, you felt good, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. The band and how, okay. You audition. And how long was it from that audition to your first gig with them? I, I think it was in the, within a week, maybe. I want to wow. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the tour was already booked and, and we had a fly. The first show was at Lemoore's in Brooklyn, New York. So I had to fly out there. And dude, we didn't go on till like one in the morning. So I, I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> My first show in a hometown uh, setting. And I remember the Anthrax guys called the venue. They were in Europe touring. And they're like, oh, dude, it's your first show. And good luck and blah, blah, blah. So it was cool, man. And it went well, yeah. Then you moved to the Bay Area, right? I never moved up there. I spent a lot of time up there because being in Exodus and, and then Testament. So, and I slept on a lot of couches, man. A lot <laughs> the first, of the, the first was, uh, Rob McKillop. Yeah. He was in Berkeley. Then, uh, yeah. Zetro was in Dublin and Gary. And then that's when actually when I joined the band. Yeah. Uh, Gary and Rick had a house up in El Cerrito. So that, that was a lot of fun, which Gary and I watched the World Series when the earthquake happened in 89. So Wow, dude, I was home. I remember that, dude. Yeah. I remember that. A lot of memories, man. A lot of stuff went down, yeah. Dude, let's talk about um, the two records you were on, Impact and Force of Habit. Do you remember any, I mean, the writing sessions for Impact? I was listening to that record. Out of the two records, I think Force of Habit has the better production. Yeah. But I think Impact is imminent had the riffs man yeah uh, the, the those riffs. guys I, that, man yeah they they really killed it on that i mean the guitar riffs are insane yeah, yeah. and uh going in there yeah i mean it, it was it was it was a good uh working experience like being in the warehouse and and then i spent a lot of time with them up in the house there and and gary was constantly like you know writing and writing lyrics as well and uh we would go there you know in the evening early evening and just jam out man and uh yeah it was a lot of fun, you know, and like and it was on that, like I said, it was so loud in there. <laughs> and those guys, man, they played it 10 on 10. Dude, so. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I've we've I've toured with Gary. We've toured with Gary, you know, in Slayer and Exodus. And I played his rig during Slayer. I go, let me check out your rig. <laughs> dude. I, it, yeah, it's you're insane, right. He's right? loud, dude. Yeah, yeah, He's loud. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, how long did it take for you guys to write Impact? I mean, it's a couple months, yeah, just being, a couple months, huh? Yeah, and then we did the drums up, and uh, see a lot of those things I don't remember. So I mean, two, three months, you know, I go from two to four to six months. So in the, in that in that, I would say a few months, and then uh, we did the drums in L.A. at uh, Music Grinder Studios. 
another big drum room, Sonny Killer. And uh, yeah, they they did their uh, a lot of their overdubs up in Mendocino up there. So oh, and I went but, back to New York at the time, and uh, yeah, I remember them calling me. Yeah, but yeah, it, it, it must have been exciting for you. It's your first real band right like and i got my first band. endorsement and the guys got me a drum kit you know it was an advance from the record company and i got a i always wanted sonar drums and i was able to get a sonar endorsement and i remember i'll never forget the day where the ups guy you know pulled right up to the uh, the warehouse the coffee warehouse and, and i seen all the drums and boxes and i was freaking out man so like it's very exciting. candy store huh oh yeah it was christmas time man and i still have that kit and a beautiful drum kit and i yeah i used that for the recording in that so it was a lot it was a lot it was a great experience man dude it was like like i mentioned earlier it was like your first you know real real like professional band like it was band yeah, first and, record you know, first yeah. record that must mm -hmm. i mean you must have got like really nervous going in there like you know, it's, yeah, it was like, how's the experience? You know, you know, when you're playing in the studio rehearsing, it's a way different vibe. Now it's yeah. like, oh, you, you're you're on tape now, dude. You know, here we go, ready? So yeah, you got to kind of put yourself in that in that in that in that in that position. You know, I mean, be comfortable and just relax a bit. And and the more you know, you get that first one out of the way, and then you get the groove and, and everything sounds good. And you know, you get your mix, and that's it, man. You just go for it, and then it becomes really exciting, and you let go of that fear and stuff. You know. The record comes out, and you, and do you remember any of the tours? What was the tour yeah. like? Did you hear I'll tell you what. The first tour was fucking amazing. It was 1990, and it was us and Suicidal Tendencies co-headlining with Pantera opening up their first tour. Wow, dude. The hell tour. So we had some good times on that, man. That was dude, a that, Dude, 1990 at that time, and Pantera was just coming up, right? It was the first record. Yeah, Cowboys from Hell. So Wow. Is that U.S. and Europe? or uh, U.S.? Yeah, oh, dude. Yeah, insane, man. Insane, dude. That's that must have been a fun tour, dude. Yeah, it was. You know man. I mean, it was a blast, and and I, I knew the guys in Pantera beforehand. I'm like, it was so exciting. Like in in the suicidal guys, I was actually hanging with uh, Rocky George at the time in L.A. And it's like they were doing their record, we were just finishing our record. I'm like, dude, we're gonna tour together. So it was I mean, a lot of fun. 1990, I would say it was the lot like the last year where metal was really popular. You know, yeah, so it was you, a good year. You were uh, you were on that tour. You were on tour that year, so it must have been. You know, you must have saw like the height of it. You know, yeah. the thrash metal. Yeah, man. Unfortunately, we didn't do any European like tours on that, man. I, yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, we did we did that that tour, and you know, we did some other stuff, but no, not Europe. I mean, then when we when we did Force of Habit, we recorded the record in England. So that's right. You recorded in in, in yeah. London, I believe, right? Yes. Now, Force of Habit. Let's get into Force. Yeah. It's a lot different than Impact, dude. It yeah. sounds in a different route. Really, really commercial. Was that pressure from the label, or is that it, you yeah, guys just definitely really? it was Capitol Records, and you know, at the time, and you know, this is what was in and stuff, and like you know, you know, our A and R guy had left. So I mean, we I remember like we had a whole meeting at the table and playing Impact is imminent. They loved it until like I got fired and stuff, and they brought someone else, and you know, so it was, it was a lot of people had gone, and it was a fucking mess. But you know, oh man, but I mean. You recorded in England, and before we started the stream, we had a funny story about that. <laughs> was, yeah. oh, was it recording or – yeah, it was recording, right? It was recording. It was before the recording we got there. It was New Year's Eve, and we had a flat, and uh, it was just Gary, and, uh, myself, and uh, Mike Butler, just us three, went out there to do the basics. And we went out, and it, we went to the Marquee in London. was still open in Soho. And we went there, and – it was a blast. It was New Year's Eve and we got tanked. We were kids. And and going back to the flat walk, I remember like getting on a ledge and doing my David Lee Rock like leap. Yeah. And but the problem was I landed on my heel. I landed wrong. I was like, oh shit, man. I remember limping and like, ah, but we're drinking. You don't feel it, right? Go back to flat hanging out. The next one I woke up, it was in pain, man. I had it in ice and everything. And and I couldn't even walk on it. Like, this is not good. So the next day we were meeting up with the producer. So, uh, oh, that next day. Yeah. So I, uh, like, I better go to the hospital, man. So I did got into a taxi, went to the hospital and I fractured it. So then I went right from the hospital to the, uh, to the studio battery studios. Ryan Maiden did number the beast and left some great recordings. In there. Really? Chris Tangeridi. So I walk in there up the stairs and I have crutches on now. So I'm meeting the producer for the first time. Like, here's your drummer. I'm like, what the hell happened to you? And I'm like, well, luckily, 
you know, I play heel up. So I just walk over to the drum kit with my crutches on, set them aside, sit down, and I was able to play. Luckily, there was no pain on my heel because, like I said, I'm playing heel up. Dude, that was it. But you felt some pain. Oh, I felt a, a bit of pain, but it was luckily it was my left foot too. I mean, doing the double bass, I definitely felt, yeah. Yeah, well, Bang. dude. Well, <laughs> luckily you were able to do the drum tracks. I did the tracks. I did the whole record. So thankfully, I'm like, because I started tripping. I'm like, what the fuck? We came all the way to England. I got to do this record. There's no way I could get out of this right now. So, you know, you just, you just, you know, plow through. Fucking straight through, man. You got to do it. No pain, no gain, kid. Right? You're, you're a savage, bro. <laughs> but, but then again, you were younger then. That, yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> no way, you were younger then. Dude, but that record, Force of Habit, I love the productions. The songs, yeah, they were a bit tamed down. As you mm -hmm. mentioned, it was uh, pressure from the label. But did, was there any heavy touring for that album, man? We did tour with Black Sabbath on that record, which was cool, on a Dehumanizer tour. And that was a lot of fun with Ronnie's and, and Vinny, and we got to hang out. And th that was a good tour, man. Yeah. yeah. Was it States and Europe, too, or just? Just here. Damn, you didn't go to I Europe on that one? The, Europe, uh, the European leg of that one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dude, great albums. I I mean, it's underrated. You know what I mean? I, even though Force there's great songs on there, man. Yeah. Yeah, there's some great songs, even though, I mean, you know, Exodus is known for that brutal violent i know it's way but, different but it's different but it's, it's different. when i listen to it now i I said man this is it's good Has now, some that, now that i'm mature songs. now that i'm mature the young thrasher would probably oh, oh yeah you know what i mean but when i mature now and listen back i go man this is really good it's really you know, good you, you go through transitions you go through you know a different time in the lot you know record companies and all that and yeah. Then now, that, at the end of the day, you think, you know, it's best to stick by your guns and just believe in what you do. You know? Exactly. Exactly. You wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. No. Well, especially did, you, those guns. Yeah. did you stay in Exodus till they broke up or did you jump to Testament? I, I jumped. Well, what happened was um, I'll, I'll never forget because we were playing at the palace. It was called a palace uh, at the time. The Avalon now, okay. across from our record label, was Capitol Records in Hollywood. Okay. And, and a good indication is when no one from the record label shows up at your gig, something's wrong. So I knew, I knew it, like the writing was on the wall and like, uh, yeah, the band got dropped. Now, what do you do now? And so, and I was just asked, Testament was going out and I was asked them, you know, if I could do the tour, I'm like, sure, I have nothing else going on at the time. And, and that's how that happened, basically. And knowing those guys as well from touring with Anthrax, so. Yeah. Was that was there any friction you leaving Exodus to? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, nobody wants to see anybody just leave a band, you know. Yeah. Like, I felt bad. I mean, you know, at the I, I needed the work and everything too, man. You know, make a living. And same thing with any other band from Testament to go to White Zombie, and you know, and yeah. it's not like I, I just get in a band and leave them flat. It's a, it's a business opportunity for me, and you know, so. As but a drummer, you from know. one thrash band to another, but they're two different styles of thrash band. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Do you, do you think your style fitted more with Testament? I do, yeah. I, I, I felt it was more of a like where Exodus is unbelievable. I mean, it was yeah. difficult to play the Tom Honig stuff. I mean, and you know, I <laughs> yeah. to be a lefty drummer, and, and I never nailed the Tom stuff. I mean, I do my best to you know capture the feel, but now nah, it's hard, man. You know, Testament. I, mean, I went in there, I was like, oh, this is cool groove, and you know, it was definitely more my style of, of uh, metal drumming. And then you're working on the on the low record too. You know, we put a lot of time into that, so which was, I'm very proud of. Was um. We just talked about his name here that you were rooming with, uh, dude from Walter Morgan, the other guitar player. Uh, oh, James Murphy. James Murphy. He was on the low record, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. He came in from Florida because Alex had left. He was out of the band by then. And and I remember they needed a guitar player and his name had come up. So, yeah. So you did some heavy touring with Testament, didn't you? Um, that, that was the tour... 90s. That's right. That was like mid 90s. or yeah, something. That was 93. Yeah. 93, 94. On that tour, uh, with Testament, I only did that one tour, really. Um, and it, it was, uh, yeah, Green Jello, Testament, and uh, the band Propane opened up. Wow. Green Jello, dude. I haven't heard that yeah. name in a long time. And then time. I did the, they, they did the, the reunion tour, Testament. I did that with them in Europe. So that was a lot of fun when Alex came out and Louis Clemente as well. So Oh, that's right. That that's right. Fun. Live in dude. London DVD came out of that. Dude, you got your, you, you know, you, you sharpened your teeth. 
you got your you know stripes you got your feet wet with a couple of killer bay area thrash bands yeah man then you then you got the opportunity to do white zombie dude how did that come about that, that was something that uh yeah that was that was me taking a chance too and i mean it was for me at the time it was like uh they were based in la i was living in la with my girlfriend and um and i just I, looking at it now it's like you know i loved it but i i seen them they're they're they were on the verge of becoming, you know, to that, that level, you know, that a level, like, and, uh, it, cause the record, the last record had gone gold. And I remember they, the big Beavis and Butthead band, you know, yeah. and so my name kept coming up from the management and like, well, I go, okay, I'll come to LA and I'll, and I'll, I'll check it out. And which I did, I felt like I had nothing to lose. And the actual tour manager of the band, Ted Kedick was a sound guy, tour manager. He called me and my, my, where I live, my apartment was, Honestly, like not even five minutes from their rehearsal studio. So I'm like, hey, can you come by? I know your brother. And I go, yeah, come and say hi. And the drum kit was set up. He goes, hey, man, yeah, go behind the kit. So I just started going nuts. I just kept, you know, doing the low record. He goes, yeah, you might not want to do all that stuff, you know? So, but you might want to you know, yeah. dumb it down. You <laughs> might want to dumb it down a little bit. But that, because they were doing a lot of triggering, he had the spikes and all that. So he actually helped me out on the audition, gave me a heads up what to do. And and so I went in there, like, you know, with nothing to lose. And, and it, it just clicked and, and I did uh, the first day was cool never never heard anything from them I'm like oh cool but we have this other guy coming in so you know come back next week which I did and, and all of a sudden I sh- started writing with them and and we did a show at the Viper room it was for the Airheads movie like a premiere thing wow Chris Farley and Tom Arnold introduced us and so I'm in the band writing the friggin record I'm like well, I'm still in Testament, but nobody has said anything. So I remember being after the sh- doing that show and talking to management manager, Andy Gould. I'm like, hey, dude, um, so what's going on? Am I in the band? He goes, oh, yeah, you're in the band. Like, But I never got a, a welcome or anything like that. So I'm like, all right. So that, and that was that. And that was a couple of years of White Side. I did a great record with them, a very successful record with Terry Date. And yeah, that was a whole different thing, man. Different. Dude, it's it kind of like you you were just Exodus and Testament, then boom, you shot up, you know. Yeah, it, it was been, like overwhelming. It, it was, and you know, doing the whole thing in the studio and um, yeah, the production of it was, you know, it, it still, I think, yeah, stands up that record, you know, kind of has the industrial, you know flavor to it and very heavy and uh yeah i'm very proud of that record too man dude on a side note we were talking about dogs earlier oh there he is what's his name espen espen oh i thought you were gonna say esper remember esper loudness and then he's like, I, he'll join me every now and then. He's cool. like my lazy co host. He's running right in there. That's why I didn't notice him. Yeah, I was all like, I heard something. I turned around. And like, I think he wants some tra- uh, snacks, but I gave him some before the stream. Ah, you know right, I mean? cool. But, dude, how is, how is it working with Rob Zombie? Great. We became really uh, good friends because I was a new guy because, you know, I came in the band. He couldn't stand the other guys, basically. You know, like, oh, I got someone to hang out with now. And I would go pick him up at his place and, you know, drive the rehearsal or recording sessions or photo shoots. So, yeah, he, um, it, it was a good time. We're still we're still friends, man. You know, it's like it's one thing. All the bands I've been in, everybody's been so cool and still friendly with everybody. And I try not to burn any kind of bridges, you know, bridges or anything like that. Just, you know. Dude, how could you not like John Tempesta? Look at you, bro. <laughs> Jack Come on, man. Yeah. Look at you. You just like so uh, fucking outgoing and shit. Man. I just like to have fun, man, and hang out and play music, right? Yeah. Hell, yeah. Hell, with, hell with that negative vibe stuff, huh? Like you know, just I don't, hanging I don't out. like being around people in negative. It's so it's a waste of time, dude. You know? Yeah. Did you We're, leave Zombie? I'm sorry. Did you leave White Zombie, or did it break up? And uh, the band broke up. And that's what happened. Uh, Rob pretty much broke up the band. It's like he had it. And and he took some time off to do movies, basically. Yeah. And then he no, he put together Rob Zombie and he asked me to come along. So which and I, you did that Rob for a bit, right? You did yeah, that for a bit? Yeah, yeah for Damn, a few dude. more years and stuff. You and that's just... when he broke that band up. He was like, I, that's when he actually wanted to concentrate on doing movies. So yeah. he took a bit of break. And then when he put the band to uh, a new band together, he wanted to do something different, which I understood. And and I was in Hellman at the time, which I loved too, because you know, another band I was really Dude, with. how how did you you're just getting all these great opportunities it's, from you know what? To helmet and it's being at the right place, the right and I knew people like Paige had just moved out from New York to LA and he was looking to put something together. So 
from a mutual friend of ours in New York. I'm like, yeah, let's get together. We wound up meeting at the Cat and Fiddle in uh, LA, had a couple drinks and talked about music. And I've always been a Hellman fan. So and he had this new thing he was working on. He had a CD. I'm like, nah, don't even worry about it. I have a drum room. Just bring an amp up and we'll jam. We'll see how it goes, you know? No expectations or anything. And we just clicked. And honestly, it was, it was a great experience, man, because, you know, coming from playing from the white zombie stuff with all the click tracks and yeah. all the big bombs, and which was amazing. This is just like old school, like really raw, you know, and just straight up, dude. Very organic, let strip down a bit. Yeah, and, and page and all that. And uh, yeah, and we became really tight. We're good friends and hung out all the time, best buddies. And that was a lot of fun, man. And uh, I'll never forget, we did the record. And then uh, Frankie, I got Frankie Bello from Anthrax in Hellman for a little bit. Yeah, he was in there for like a split second or maybe yeah, a, a yeah. split a, couple of seconds. Yeah, we did a tour together. I mean, and he... And Frankie and I were like best buddies. We went to high school together. We were in a high school band together. So to play together on stage, it was a trip, man. It was so much fun. Dude, yeah, you, you had that stint with Helmet. Yeah. And you're just getting, like, then the cult comes along, right? Yeah. That's another thing I got a call from Mike Monarulo, who manages Anthrax now. And you know? who books Death Angel. <laughs> That's right. Mike, he's, he books. Yeah, exactly. And Mike, he was with TKO with, with uh, Cult. You know, they're reuniting again after how many years? I don't know how many times they broke up. So, yeah, um, this was what, 2005, 2006. And uh, he says, hey, man, they were auditioning drum on the tryout. And I'm like, I don't know. Because the funny story is I went to audition for them 13 years prior for the Cult. Because really? uh, Ron Lafitte, do you know Ron? He managed Megadeth and stuff. No, I don't know him. Well, anyhow, he was managing the cult. He called me, he goes, hey, these guys are, they're, uh, they're looking for a drummer. I think he'd be perfect for them, your style and your look and blah, blah, blah. And Rick Rubin had just did this track called The Witch, which he sent me. It was cool. I was like, all right. So I was really confident. I was a testament at the time, too. Yeah. I was like, all right. It was in L.A., too. And I was like, yeah, I really felt like I was going to get the gig. I'm like, because I, I always want to play with the cult. And I, any anyway, long story short, I'm crashing in my friend's apartment. My friend drive. I didn't have a car for some reason. He drives me to the audition. It's like 100 freaking degrees in the valley in L.A. And I go there and I go to the front desk and the woman, I go, I'm here for the uh, cult audition. It's like, oh, they're not here today. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm all set up to audition. I'm like, no, they, they, they stopped. They're not doing it. I'm like, what? Just before cell phones. So now I have to fucking find a pay phone a couple <laughs> blocks away in this heat, trying to find some change. I'm like, Ron, what happened? He goes, I don't know. Those guys, were, you know, at their time, whatever they were going through. But you know what? Timing is everything. Because if I would have gotten a gig, I, I wouldn't have been in White Zombie then, you know, so. Yeah, at the right, place at the right time. So fate has taken its course, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but, but you, but you always. It seems like you timing has been great for you, man. Timing has been really good. Yeah, but that. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, now that you were the cult. I mean, now the cult is your main band, right? It's like fifteen years now. The longest band I've ever been in. Isn't that crazy, wow, dude? Yeah, but, but you do. But you're off now too, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You guys done some cool stuff. I mean, the cult yeah. is would you say the cult is the biggest band you've done so far? Uh, White Zombie. White Zombie by but, far. You right? know, headlining arenas. But we did some big festivals with the cult though, like opening up for the Who. We did <sighs> a bunch of dates in Europe with them and we played the uh we opened up for the Who in uh Sa Sao Paulo, Brazil at wow, the dude. stadium. That was amazing, man. Yeah. So dude, we those, did really those, good shows, man. Yeah. Those those Brazilians, man. They're nuts. Yeah. They are uh, and nuts. I, both those, they do really well down in South America. So and especially like, yeah, Rio or something, you know, anywhere inside or Argentina, they go bananas. So they have a really good following. And yeah, and, and, and going to Europe a lot with the cults. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. And even in White, White Zombie, we didn't go to Europe that much either. We really? did we did the Donington Festival and uh yeah, the Reading Festival, and we did some dates around that, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Wow, dude. But dude, I mean, we did one tour of the UK and stuff. So not much touring. So that's what's it's cool going with the cult, you know, touring all over Europe with them. Now, now that's your priority. But you also do other stuff on the side. You have Motor Sister. Yeah, we finished a new record. I'm really excited about it. actually that record. I'll tell you, um, I had just finished my drum tracks right before the lockdown. A friend of mine knew someone who worked at the governor's office and said, they're going to do a lockdown. So I told everyone at the studio, everybody's panicking. I'll never forget, like, finishing my tracks and then going to the market and stocking up for a while. And I remember Scott and Joey left the studio and they, they went to Whole Foods. They spent hours in there. And then and it, it happened a few days later. The lockdown actually happened. But we got done. And so since then... 
we uh, finally finished the record, you know, after, after all that calmed down and they did their overdubs and vocals and, and Jay Rustin makes it and it sounds killer, man. So we're going to have it. Out I, I've heard some motor sister stuff, man. It's good. I mean, you're jamming with good people. I mean, Scott Ian, of course, great people, amazing great, musicians, great rhythm, got a great rhythm hand. Of course you got Joey Vera, <laughs> Jim Wilson, Pearl. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're, in, they're insane man. they're great. Great it's people. awesome, dude. It's, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun as well. Yeah. John Tempesta. Now, dude, kind of full circle. Look at my dog's bugging me. I ain't got no treats, bro. <laughs> my dog is passed out over here, man. Look, yeah, Luna's out. I don't out. know what he's bugging me for, but. I got Luna. She's like, fuck. Look at that. Oh, dude. Dude, well. <laughs> there he is. What's up, buddy? Uh, what a beauty. That's is John he full Tempesta. Labrador? Full lab. I yeah. Got him. I got him dog. from a. Uh, he's a breed from hunters i got him in oregon oh really yeah bloodlines all hunting so he's good at like yeah. my dad my dad was a hunter he we had a english spring and spaniel growing up in an irish setter you know that dog would just jump in the river freeze oh yeah he does the same yeah. thing too so i don't know why he's bugging me but hold on anyways dude, dude uh, yeah full full circle with exodus you did psycho vegas dude that was crazy, man. Um, yeah, it, it was it was really exciting. I, I got a call from Tom Hunting. Like, wow, I thought Tom was calling me about like drums or something, you know, and, and you know, I knew about the surgery. We started talking. For, he goes, hey, dude, you know, we got this gig coming up. It was, it was like, At Vegas, I go, you know, if I can walk, I can play. Basically, yeah, there might be a chance I can. Would you be able to do it? Like, whoa, he called me off guard. I'm like, wow, man. It, first of all, it's an honor to be asked by Tom Hunting. And like, it was really nice to him. And like, oh, I really appreciate it. But let me see what's happening with my band and give me like a week and, you know, I'll get back to you. And and I remember going to my buddy's house in Malibu the next day and like listening to songs. I was excited. I'm like, I could do this. I could do this. And I I, I, I called Tom the next day. Oh, I could fucking do this, man. So I just started listening and listening and everything. And uh, it was a bit nerve wracking. I put myself under a lot of pressure because I haven't played in a while. Plus, I haven't played a show since December of 2019, like a whole full live show and to play this type of music again, you know, I mean, yeah, it's been a while since you played thrash metal. Yeah. And Gary came over. Uh, we jammed for a couple days. He stayed, you know, he came over to my place and I have a rolling kit and he my, you know, he borrowed an amp from my brother and we just jammed, went through the songs, went great, you know, and uh, we jammed the next day for a bit. I'm like, yeah. And then the next following week we had one rehearsal in Vegas and that was it with the full man and he got up and played. So <laughs> it was like, what the hell happened? How yeah. did it feel to be back in Exodus for that show? I was great. I mean, just, you know, fucking looking at the, and then having Rick come out as well. It was special, man. And the crowd loved it. They dug it. And, yeah. I saw some know? footage. I was like, one, it was a very unique set list. I mean, till death do us part, bro. Yeah. That was a lot of stuff. Like in the Tom said, you know, we could, you know, do the set list around you. I'm like, well, you know, I understand the bonded stuff, which is great, you know, and like, yeah. I love the pleasures and, you know, then we have to do, you know, fucking only death decides. Right. From Impact. We have to do one song from that era that I'm actually on. And yeah. when we couldn't play it, we ran out of time. So it's which sucked. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Damn. But you know, like till death do us part. I never seen them play that live. And that's oh, a, really? That's a a tricky drum intro. Yeah, yeah. I do my own kind of version of it because that was yeah. the first tour we played it. Um there's a live record, Good Friendly Violent Fun, that which is on there. So yeah. That's a great song to play too. And Chemical as well. Dude, man, John Tempesta back with Exodus after how long, dude? But I think that's really cool that they 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 kept it in the family and called. Yeah, it was really nice. And Setro had uh, he gave me a really nice intro for that in front of the crowd, which it was really special, man. And dude, Zetro's oh. Zetro's a trippy guy. I love him. Loves it. He, he makes me correct. laugh, yeah. dude. You know, he makes yeah. me laugh. I had him on my stream, but it was dedicated to his love for candy. Do really? You know about that, dude. This dude. He knows his candies in and out. I mean, in oh. and out. He'll tell you where it was made, who, blah, blah, blah. It's really, insane. I don't think I remember that. He's been on like a whole new like diet thing, man. Real healthy and stuff, you know, eating. You know. Other than candy, yeah. dude. Other he, than candy. Well, I'm not going to ask him about that. But now he's great. I spent a lot of time staying with up in, with him up in Dublin when we were working on the Force of Habit record. And uh, he's great, man. His whole family and everything. He just cracks me up. We we would just do like the jerky boys back and forth to each other or the two bar. <laughs> hey, you got that guy. I'll burn your ass. You know, I'll put the ZZ on both sides of your cheek. <laughs> there you go. Look at this guy. But you know what, dude? I, yeah. I, I'll throw out a fact that people don't know. You have you a get? brother. Mike. Yes. And he played in Power Man 5000. Which was Rob Zombie's brother. 
Spider, oh, right? Yeah, that's Rob Zombie's brother. The two brothers in there, huh? Wow, you got the Pesta bro and the Zombie brother. Yeah, you know? man. I think I, I might have seen them once at an Ozfest or something early yeah. on. I they had, they did that big show in Metallica too, man. Yeah. Wow, man. Is your, is your whole family, is, is just just you and Mike in your family? I have two older brothers, but not musicians. They're so you and Mike are the only ones that play music. Yeah, and we just, uh, we recorded a track together, which Mike wrote for Graham Bonnet's new record, man. Really? Which is killer. I mean, you know, I mean, we did a song before. It was for a drum clink many years ago and more of on the Michael Schenker uh vibe that because we grew up with that ufo shanker and all that and like yeah let's do something together and uh and it just happened and so we wound up jamming that song at uh my symbol company they, they had a, like a live footage thing going on so we went into their office and did that live uh like two years ago which you could find on youtube which which was we did that song we called it the pirate song which was a lot of fun and so uh my, my brother's really tight with graham and then and during on the lockdown um we did uh we did go to lockdown jams and, and and Phil Demel actually hit me up and he wanted to do a Shanker song into the arena. But the song I did with my brother was kind of similar to it. I'm like, what about Assault Attack? You know, I love that song. And Ted Kenna, uh, the drummer, uh, rest, in, rest in peace. Uh, he was a good friend of mine and it was like a tribute to him. So he was all into it. I go, I think I could probably get Graham Bonnet to sing on it, which he did and got my brother involved and Joey Varon. So it's killer, man. Damn, dude, jamming with fucking. It must be cool to jam with your brother, though. It was a lot of fun. We're gonna do it more. I, I think so. You know, we talked about doing some more stuff down the line, and he's gonna soundproof his garage and do a whole studio. I got a million drum kits, so I'll stick one in there and and play some cool music, man. So just you yeah. know, so always let me, fun. Let me ask you something. You 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 auditioned for a lot of bands. Is there a band that you auditioned for that you didn't get that you were bummed? No. Nah. I think every band I played in, not to sound like a fucking dick or anything, but <laughs> all the bands I played in are fucking great bands, man. From Exodus to Testament to White Zombie to Rob Zombie to Helmet yeah. to the Cult. You know what I mean? They're all killer bands. You know, Mother Sister. And yeah, uh, I did audition for Ace Freely when I was a kid. A really? Yeah, that was like my first audition. I wasn't ready. I, you know, going in. And Eric Carr, the drummer from Kiss, he came down the audition to introduce me to Ace, which was really cool of him. Oh, but, you knew Eric Carr? I'm sorry? Did you know Eric Carr? Yeah, I actually, uh, I was friends with Eric, and I set up his drums for the X and Sex video. Really? I live in New York, and uh, yeah, he asked if I could, he needed a drum tech, and he drove me home that time, and we wound up having a couple of drinks and talking about history, and long story short, he drops me off, and it's, it's Tuesday night, my mom's card party night. The old lady smoking cigarettes with the big hair, so oh, I got to come up and see my mom. So open the door and he's lit. It's a cloud of smoke. I'm like, oh my God, who's that? I go, Ma, this is Eric Carr from Kiss. I'm like, oh my God, look at that hair. And they all say, you know, it's nice to meet you, Mrs. Tempest. I'm like, I got to get out of here. So that's, that's funny, funny, dude, because, you know, our drummer Will's a big Kiss fan. I know, yeah. He, he loves Eric talk, Carr. Right? And one, I'll, I'll tell you a story which has Eric Carr in it. Mm -hmm. uh, we were jamming out at some Kiss. <clears throat> we were jamming out on the Kiss Tune at rehearsal years ago. And, um, I forgot what song, and we were playing it, and Rob goes, hey, man, that, that kind of sounds different. It doesn't sound like the original. And Will goes, I'm playing the Eric Carr version. Nah, <laughs> man, he was a beast, dude. That's yeah, how I but, met him. Actually, Anthrax did the Kiss tour back in 88. Was, mm -hmm. was that on the Hot in the Shade tour, I think? No, th that was uh, Crazy, Crazy Nights. Night. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think Will saw that tour here, and... He said anthrax blew him away. And there's a clip. There's a clip of it. Um, and there's the NFV video, anthrax video. And there's a clip of Charlie, Eric, and myself in, in there and like all playing on a practice pad. It's pretty. Cool. Well, that's cool, man. You knew Eric Carr. Rest in peace, Eric. Yeah, Carr, you know? great. So, One of the nicest guys I ever met in the business. You know, I saw Kistory and I didn't know he was a. a it, it showed he was a stove repair guy before he was in Kiss. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Did you know him then? No, no. I met him. Uh, I, I, yeah, I met. I ran into him probably at the Cat Club in New York back in the day when I lived there. You know, everybody would hang out there and saying hi. But then doing the tour is when I uh, really got to know him. Wow, yeah. dude, that's yeah. cool, man. I can't wait to tell Will. Hey, dude, I was talking to John. I probably we probably talked about it. I'm sure we did. I remember the one time it was it was uh, Will and Mark and I. Uh, we were we were in Minnesota. It was like freezing cold after that tour we were on mm -hmm. I go, and I, we started talking about david boy i go you know dennis davis is a friend of mine 
the drummer, you know, from fame and everything. It was the first drummer I've ever seen. He goes, no way. And they probably thought it was bullshit. Like, I'm going to call him right now. We had a couple drinks. And, and I call it. It was like two in the morning. He was like, oh, oh. like Dennis. I mean, He's like, bro, do you know what time it is, man? I'm like, oh, dude, I'm sorry, man. So they, they I do they, remember they, that story. They got it. They got it. Got it, got it yeah. Man, um, dude, that's <laughs> so what, what's going on? I mean, with this pandemic and all, yeah. um, didn't you have some cult dates coming did, up? But but it was been canceled. postponed, right? Next month we had dates set up and uh, they were filling in more dates, but decided to cancel. It's just not, not the time. And if anybody gets, you know how it is, man. Yeah. One person yeah. Gets it. And Billy's in the UK. If he comes all the way over and you know what I mean? You know, on, on like a couple week tour, two, three week tour. And then day two, if someone gets sick, that's it. Basically everything shuts down. So what have you been right. doing during this pandemic time? I'm sorry. What 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 have you been doing? Because I'll tell you, man. During this pandemic time, man, there's times where I get inspired, and there's times I'm just like not inspired. Like yeah, oh, there dude. was a couple things. I, I did some of those jams. Um, I I did go to New York. I recorded a record with Rob Caggiano. There's we have another side band called Temple of Black Moon, which wow. we did like seven years ago. It just never, you know, we never finished it. It's uh yeah, it's Rob and um, King of Hell uh, on bass and Danny Phil from Cradle of Filth. And it's fucking heavy, man. So I went out there to New York. We were in the studio in Long Island, Babylon, this warehouse where me and Rob stayed. He had some beds. He had bunkers, basically bunkered up in the studio. And it was there for about like uh, 10 days, man. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting lineup. It's cool. Danny Phil and King here, of Rob's Hell. Tracking, he's tracking his guitars right now. So... It took a while because you had to get you had to finish the Volbeat record and everything as well. So, yeah, you know. is that like black metal? No, no, it's really? more group. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah, it's hard to say. It's got a bit of old Metallica, Merciful Fate in there. So, yeah, wow, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I I see. I assume it was black metal because you got you mentioned King of Hell and Danny Phil. Yeah, I figured it was gonna It'll be, be the vocals like that. Yeah, obviously, you know what I mean, but. I'm excited. I can't wait to hear it, man. I've been mean, so much yeah. years since I did my track. So let's Dude, go, I Bob. I can't wait to hear it too, bro. Yeah. Hopefully so, this I mean, year will be out. So you've done that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like I said, man, this time is just like, I mean, we've done some live streams. Have you guys, have you done live stream? With we did a live work? stream for Motor Sister. That's what okay. we did. At the, whiskey. At the whiskey. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That was weird. It's like doing a video shoot, basically. So We did three of them. Oh, you did? Wow. We did, like, last December, we did our annual Christmas shows. We, we usually have them here in San Francisco, but we did a right. live stream. That's and, slept, right? What? That's, but it's closed down now. Oh, what a drag. I love that place. Man. Dude, I walked by there the other day, and it's a, a dance club called YOLO. And it's one of those, like, dance clubs that you have to go, you know, champagne room and type all that. What? Yeah, it's that type of venue now, which I'm kind of bummed. But we had our Christmas shows there, but last year we did it online. We did a stream. Like you said, it's weird, but you got to adjust to the times. Then we just yeah. did one in June. Mm -hmm. We did a, a show of bastard tracks, songs we barely don't play at all. Oh, really? That's songs awesome. Songs that we had, like, the first time we ever played them. Oh, wow. Yeah. How was that? It was interesting. It was great, man. I mean, having to, you know, having to uh, play some of these tracks, like some, there was a couple of tracks that haven't been played since 88. Holy shit. You know what I mean? And there's songs that never been played at all. So, and hard songs that haven't been played in years that it felt good to do something different, you know, instead yeah. of being in that, you know, do you guys change up your set list every night when you go out with the cult? No, same. <laughs> Pretty much the same for the lighting and everything. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll throw a song in here and there, whatever. But but yeah, yeah I mean the last the last tour we actually did was the uh, the Sonic Temple. We did the whole record basically, so from start that, to finish, and then we did uh, extra songs at the end. Yeah, that must have been fun. It was great. Yeah, that was a really good tour, man, and it was a good way to end. Actually, I'm. It was our last show was uh in uh, December at at the House of Blues in Boston. That was all I show. Wow. It was winter you, time, it was cold. I believe you played the Bay Area. Was that the Bill Graham Civic? I think. Uh, I know a couple of people went to see the cold. Oh, shit. No, we didn't play San Francisco. We played in Reno. Of course, Craig Beerhorse came up to that show. Oh, okay. Yeah. I swore you came to the Bay Area. Maybe we I'm played, Yeah, we played that Wiltern a bunch of times. Not the okay. Civic. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, wait. Wait a second. Wait, you're right. 
because we stayed in San Francisco. Where the hell did that? Must have been a Wolterman. I think it, I think it was Bill Graham Civic. I could be wrong. No, right. no, it was uh, the Warfield. No, because they were. I remember the power went out. Zetcho came to that show. What's the place uh, off of Van Ness? What's that theater over there? The Regency. That's where we played. That's right. How did I forget this? Because I remember there's a power outage. So somebody hit the pole, and we didn't. We weren't sure if the show was going to go on. And Zetcho came to that one. See? That's right. See, come on, man. I, I have a. I Bill didn't even go to there. the show, but I have some of the area. Memory. God, was, I didn't. Need, I wasn't even at the show, but I. I remember you came to San Francisco. That's right. Where were you? <laughs> I, I. I don't know. <laughs> See, that's it. That's all right. That's cool. So, uh, uh, do you have other than Rob Caggiano's project? Is are you doing anything else besides that and Motor Sister? Have you considered just? Do you play guitar? No. Uh, no. You ever think of doing like a maybe a solo thing or you know? Nah. I mean, I was asked to do some like you know I. You know, It'd be kind of cool. I mean, I, I look at drummers like Cozy Powell, my favorite drummers. He did some amazing solo records or Money Taka Gucci from Loudness. I remember him doing some cool projects. And I don't know, man. I never really thought about it, to be honest with you. But I would like to do something with my brother. I think that would be cool, the next thing to do. That'd be good. You know, and get some with your brother. musicians and knowing a lot of people and, you know, get you to play some guitar on there. Come on. Yeah, I'll play some rhythm guitar. That'd be fun. I get to you know I mean? jam with John Tempesta. From Exodus, on, baby, come out! I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna know you, John. Oh, you, John Tempesta from Exodus? Yeah, I know John. <laughs> John. Oh yeah, he also plays for the cult. Yeah, but I, I know him from Exodus, bro. We go way back, dude. <laughs> we go way back, oh, dude. So if you, funny. If, Last time I seen you was when when the tour ended. You were at the airport. We were at the airport together. Yeah, dude. I just don't remember. That was a fun tour, dude. That was a yeah, fun tour. It, it was a lot of fun. And obviously, like all the bands, you know, you guys and Testament I was in and, and Anthrax growing up with those guys. So, yeah, it was a blast, man. So what do you got going on this year? I mean, not that well, I mean. Our tour got it, canceled. So uh, Motor know. Sister doing anything? We're going to do uh, next year. We got some next stuff. year. Yeah, everything's going to be pretty much at this point. I think next year, you know what I mean? So let's get through this year again. And uh, uh, yeah, so. Oh, you know, we're going to reschedule cult dates again for the third time. <laughs> it, it is what it is, but not yeah. to bring up a sore subject here, but you did catch COVID recently. I did. After the show in Vegas, it was a drag, man. I, uh, yeah, I came home and, um, well, I came home that Monday afternoon. I actually changed my flight early. And after the show, I went, I didn't hang out. You know, after me and Rick, we, we walked over to see Broken Hope at the House of Blues there. Honestly, w watched a couple songs. I was tired. My ears were ringing and I just wanted to get uh, some food. We had some ramen. I was in bed by 1030. I was up at six. I'm like, dude, my flight's not till 12 or one o'clock. I, I want to get some earlier out, and which I did. I, I changed my flight to 1120 flight. Had some breakfast. I seen Zetro down there and it's great. Took the shuttle with Jack to the airport and uh, got on my flight. And I was right next to Tracy Vera and Diana from Metal Blade. And oh, we I all love Diana. Stuff. I right love thing. them both. And yeah, they're amazing. And uh, it, was, it was the funny thing is I flew out from Burbank Airport with Joey Vera. So that, that was pretty funny. <laughs> nice. the, the Vera family. So, yeah, I felt fine the next day and uh, Wednesday. I noticed a cough and I wanted to get tested just in case because I honestly had a bad feeling about Vegas because doing an indoor arena thing like that, it's a cesspool, man. You know, as careful as you are, all it takes is touching something, an elevated door and people coming and going or touching your face. And yeah, so I, I had a cough and the next day I went I went to urgent care and sure enough, they said I tested positive. I'm like, Fuck, man. So, I, you know, I've been in quarantine. I have a couple of days left. I'm going to get tested again on Monday. But I'm very lucky because I was vaccinated and uh, very mild. It felt, honestly, no no fever, no aches, basically like a cold. I had colds worse than this, to be honest with you. So just well, that's good. I mean, yeah, that's thankfully, good. man, honestly, and the vaccine, uh, you know, it works, you know, because I know a lot of people didn't get the vaccine and, and got it. And I had a friend who was down for eight days, bedridden, like sweat. He had night terrors. I mean, serious. And this guy is a tough guy, a kickboxer and stuff. And uh, yeah, man, he lost like 10 pounds from that, too. So, wow, dude. this is very mild. So, you know, I mean, so they told you to quarantine for 10 days or something yeah. and just. Uh -huh. Stay away from yeah, people. Just home, man. Just chilling. I'm freaking cooped up. I'll tell you that much. So. Dude, dude. Yeah. I mean, I'm not cooped up. I still go out. You know, I do, yeah. the, of course, social distancing and whatnot. Hey. Yeah, but, same with me, man. 
but I need some sunshine, you know, I need. Yeah, I, I usually my routine is I get up in the morning, I go to the dog park, you know, and then I'll come back. I'll go to the gym here and there. I'll go to my drum room, run some errands. So, yeah, but, you know, if there's a show happening, I'll, you know, once in a while, I'll go check it out. But I'm pretty much homebody guy, you know, well, we're older now, huh? Yeah, we're older now, dude. It's old, dude. dude. But yeah. you are doing another Exodus show. That's next week, a week from today. Yeah. In Cave and Rock, Illinois. Have you ever done that show? Yes, dude. You have? Yes. It's a hike, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's, check this out. It's a hike. Last time we did it, I was like 2019 or 2017. I don't know what year, but yeah. it's in the middle of nowhere. I heard, yeah. And you know what? Our light, we had a, our lighting guy was uh came out. He goes, he does our lights. He goes, dude, I found out it's in the middle of nowhere. And he brought pyro. We use pyro. <laughs> Man, dude, it's like it's like Blair Witch. You get no cell signal. So you probably can't even see anybody. It's so dark. There's probably no lights for the crowd or anything either, right? Hardly, Other dude. It's hardly. It's like, dude, it's you'll wow. you'll trip out. You'll trip out. But it's the, the, the show is cool. It was fun. But so we had pyro. We, first time we ever had pyro. It's insane. Yeah. You blow up all the trees. But you're in the middle of the woods. It was like really open. Like, wow. The guy goes, go ahead. Have pyro. We just lit it up, had a good time, but it's in the middle of nowhere. But it was the fun show. Did you fly into? I, I, I believe we're flying into Chicago. Then I have to take a uh, a jumper to um, Indiana, like Evansville, and then drive there. So I think we flew into St. Louis and we got yeah, you St. Louis to Nashville as well. So uh, yeah, but did be interesting, <laughs> dude. A second Exodus gig. Everyone who's Every out family. there who's near Cave and Rock. Cave Rock, Illinois, or the surrounding areas, go to Full Terror Soul. Come on out. It's going to be fun, man. Yeah. John Tepesta, play. Rick's Force coming Habit. out too. I can take are you guys, or he said it on his show, so why not? Dude, are you guys, is, is that, I mean, is Rick in the band, or he, is he just doing I'm just fun? doing the shows, and it was one of my requests to get him out to do, you know, for me doing this. I'm like, we got to get Rick to do this, too, so. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Just, you know, just for the vibe, huh? Absolutely. Oh, I love Rick, man. And I haven't seen him in, like, we were trying to figure out uh, probably 20 years, so. Wow, yeah. dude. And, so it was, a... and he, he he was so, he was on fire during the show. He was like a little kid. He was so excited, man. The energy. You know how nuts he gets on stage. Was, oh, dude. Was, he's he's yeah, Rick and, Uno. Yeah, man. and he's vibe from that energy, man, when you see him get into it. And I, I loved it. So I can't wait for the next ones. So that's cool. John, yeah. we're coming to a close on my stream right. on this episode. But before we go, I always do this to all my guests. Hold on a minute. Look, he, he has a good sit. What's he doing? <laughs> hey, buddy. He has a good sit. He's probably there like, hey, man, I want a treat or something. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I asked 12 questions. It's called Dirty Dozens. I'm going to give you 12 questions. You fire away. Uh-oh. You ready? I guess. Come on, John Tempesta. Here no. we go. Mild or spicy? Uh, medium. You're the second person who said that on <laughs> Fuck yeah. This is too much gives me the agita, you know? Right there in the stomach, the heartburn, dude. Yeah. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Yeah. A movie you could watch over and over again. Good fellas. Woo! Good movie. Good movie. Great. Your biggest, your biggest pet peeve? Pet peeve? Uh, shit. You know what always bothered me? <laughs> <laughs> Annoying people, but the chalkboard with the nails when they see jaws, like that just drives me freaking crazy. I don't know where that came oh, from. I could see that. Yeah, it, it, it does <laughs> drive me. You squeak, you know, scream <laughs> like that. Ugh, it just guns under my skin. Yeah. What time does your alarm clock go off? There's no alarm clock. I'm, I'm like automatic, automatic alarm clock, like six o'clock a.m. every day. Damn, there you go. A song you love to sing when you're all alone. <sighs> I, I always have this like mix of my airplane mixes, you know, it could be from Elton John to Elliot Smith to Jeff Buckley, you know, Soundgarden, Temple. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's hard to, uh, uh, let's see. How about our song, Elton John? Okay. There you go. Your dream vacation. Ooh, I've been to so many places, but I love to go down to uh, Bora Bora. Or oh. something. That sounds nice, man. I heard a lot about Bora Bora. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, one thing about you that probably annoys others. Fucking my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it. Yeah. I hate right. self-talk, so, but, you know. What, what's your favorite smell? 
Ah, uh, God damn. Where do you come with these questions? Uh, I love Jasmine. Jas I mean, anything like Jasmine's you know, good. outside my, uh, my door here. Yeah. All right. Hey, um, let me see what's, an Oh, an instrument you wish you could play. Oh, guitar. I always wanted to play piano so I could do that. You know, that cool thing that those guys do. Like so you, can, you can Elton Steve John Tyler. out. Yeah, man. Like dream on or something like that. You know? There yeah. you go. Fuck yeah. yeah. Dude, on a scale of one to five, how good of a dancer are you? It depends now. See, I could be the shittiest fucking white dancer, or if I have a couple, I'll get in my groove. It depends on the song, and I'll just be dance fever, man. So it's hard to say. I'll give it a three. Dude, thank you. <laughs> Honest <laughs> answer right there. Okay, last one, and it's a weird one. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Um, I just had some cereal, Special K. Special K? Yeah, nice. chocolate delight. Yeah. Here, here, let me ask you, I'll ask you a bonus question. You behind the kit, who would you want to jam with your dream your dream band? Oh, man, like, pick a member. It could be anybody. Well, Rainbow is one of my favorite bands. So, and, you know, Richie Blackmore or something like that. Jeff Beck is another one. Of, you know, I mean, Tony, I did play with Tony Iommi. So yeah, I, you played on his solo record. But that, right? was, that freaked me out. Being in the studio and with Chino from the Deptones was in the, in the room as well, man. And really? We together, yeah. How was, was it playing? Was, how was playing with the riff lord it was unbelievable i sat my, i had my drum tech there it was a break of uh we had a, a few days off in the Ozfest 99 and tony had asked me if i could play a song I'm like, so we went on this tour bus to uh massachusetts longview farm chino and i and he's just telling stories and the next day we set up and, and tony's right there with his lanny amp and all of a sudden it just he hits the chord and i was there i'm like and it's just, I mean, it's one of those things. I just did this drum fill. It was like a Cozy Powell fill. It's like a tribute to Cozy. And he just looked and like smiled. So I was like, ah. you know? dude, you got to you got to play a song and jam with the with the riff lord, bro. I and it's unbelievable. And I have a cross that uh, an engraved cross he sent me with my name on it, the Sabbath cross that he gave dude. to me when he played on the record, like. It freaks me out, man, when I just even think about it. Yeah. Dude, John, thank you for jumping on the stream, dude. Ah, oh, man, it was good talking to you, Ted. I dude, hope to see you out there soon, bro. I hope to see you soon. I hope to see you in person. I want to give you a hug. I want to see you jamming the cult. You know what I mean? I, I want to see it all, dude. Yeah, hopefully you know I mean? soon, brother. And give all your boys a big hug for me, man. I, miss I will you. stick around real quick. Okay. Everyone, John Tempesta, if you want to know everything about John Tempesta, he has a killer website, johntempesta.com. His biography is great. The photos. Learn everything from him. Go check it out. And thank you for joining live and streaming on Saturday. Everyone say bye to John Tempesta. Later. See ya. <laughs> Hold on a minute.